Davis. 60 dead, thousands injured. Yesterday was the worst day of violence in years in the Gaza Strip. Israeli troops used live ammunition to fire at protesting Palestinians at the border fence, an action that has been condemned around the world. The massacre comes at a time full of significance. Yesterday, the United States opened a new embassy in Jerusalem, a symbolic recognition of the city's status as capital of Israel. Today is the 70th anniversary of what the Palestinians called the catastrophe, the Nakba, when they were driven from their homes by the newly independent Jewish state. Robert Short reports. Today marks the Nakba, the catastrophe, the day Palestinians remember the hundreds and thousands of their relatives and forefathers who were displaced from their homes during the Arab-Israeli war 70 years ago. Also today, some of the 60 Palestinians killed yesterday by Israeli forces at the border fence with the Gaza Strip were buried. One of the dead was an eight-month-old infant overcome by tear gas. Over 2,000 people were injured. The violent protests along the Gaza Strip have been continuing for weeks now, described by Palestinians as the Great March of Return to claim back property seized by Israel in the wars and conflicts since its founding in 1948. Israel claims Hamas is using the protests as cover to launch terrorist attacks. Israeli Defense Forces yesterday released this video claiming to show an attack on its border fence. Hamas has been the de facto government in Gaza since 2007. The narrow coastal strip, home to almost two million people, has been under a partial blockade by Israel and Egypt since then. With intermittent power and water supplies, the UN has warned Gaza will be unlivable by 2020. Yesterday's mass killings marked the worst violence in Gaza since a 50-day war in 2014, left over 2,000 Palestinians and 73 Israelis dead. Ireland added its voice today to the concern expressed by several countries about the level of violence being used by Israel. An emergency meeting of the UN Security Council today discussed the violence in Gaza. The US ambassador defended Israel's actions, but with no peace process in place, the opportunity for diplomacy to play a role seems, for the present, to be remote. Robert Short reporting. I'm joined now from Tel Aviv by former Neset member Dr. Annette Wilf. Dr. Wilf, uh, good evening. How can any government justify the use of live ammunition against unarmed protesters? All governments can justify the use of power to protect borders against those who seek to invade their borders with the declared intent of taking over their country. I think that is the very definition of sovereignty. In fact, the global outcry on what has happened sends the Israelis a very clear message. No matter, even if you retreat to the 1967 lines, the lines that supposedly the Western and international community holds dear, even if you retreat to these lines, as Israel has done in Gaza fully, uh, we still don't think you have a legitimate right to exist even within those borders. And I'm that sorry, is I'm sorry the to cut across you, Dr. Will, but, but many, people, Israel... many people looking at the pictures from Gaza yesterday and looking at the death toll of 60 people, including eight children under the age of 16, and looking at the number of Israeli citizens and soldiers who have been killed or have been injured in this incident, which is zero, would regard what happened yesterday as a completely disproportionate use of force. Uh, I assume you would have been more pleased and happier to find that more Jews had been killed in the process. That is an uh, outrageous thing to say, Dr. Wilf. That is an outrageous intent, thing to which say. Many Excuse countries... me, Dr. Wilf. That is an outrageous thing to say. Oh. That is absolutely outrageous. The point here oh, um, is that I think the Israeli what you defense said was forces... quite outrageous. I merely. Uh, I merely interpreted what you said, but I'm being very clear. The Israeli public and the defense forces defending it have sent a very clear message. Israel within the 1967 border will not let people breach its borders. People who have made it very clear that they have murderous intent, not peaceful, not protesters, any country would have behaved in the same way. And the fact where that people else in are the world, Dr. Wilf, where are else in the world against have Israel you seen 
a situation where unarmed protesters have been killed in their Every dozens war, with live ammunition. These are not unarmed. These are not unarmed protesters. These are people who have declared very clearly that Israel is their enemy state. They are in a state of war with it for over 70 years. They have made it very clear that they believe that the Jewish people have no right whatsoever to be sovereign in any borders, even the supposedly 1967 borders that the international community holds dear. Every country in the world would be very clear that its borders are sacrosanct and that people who are its enemies are not allowed to invade it with the intention of killing and taking over the country that they are invading. That is the very basic of international law, community, and sovereignty. The fact that the Jewish people are again and again deny that right. The fact that the international community after Israel retreats to the 1967 lines. We were supposed to see massive backing. We were promised that if Israel retreated to the 67 lines, the world will be with it in defending its borders. Where is the world now when Israel is defending its borders? When the Israeli people left and right are saying, we are more than willing to compromise. We are more than willing for there to be a Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza. But sorry, the Jewish people are done being in the business of suicide. We have a state. We have the right to protect it. We have the right to protect our borders. With we are willing to compromise. Use of force, the Palestinians Dr. With have respect, a right Dr. to Wilf. a state. With respect, Dr. It Will, you, the, have, it, you have the right to no protect your borders with when proportionate you defend, use. There are no propor No, we have the right to protect our borders, period. There is no question of proportion in defending our borders. Clearly. Our borders are such that once we've retreated to them, no one should go in. They will not pass. That is very clear. Israelis across the board are very clear. We protect our home. No one gets to invade our home. I don't know why you think it's legitimate that people with armed murderous intent will invade the home of the Jewish people. Do you How think any, any of the eight children aged under the age the of 16 had murderous intent? First of all, there is complete dispute over these facts. You, we already know that half of the people, we're talking about 45,000 people who stormed the border. They did not storm the border with Egypt, only with Israel. And they declared that it's only Israel because as far as they're concerned, it's only the lands of Israel that they wish to take back. It's only the people of Israel that, as they said, they wish to take their hearts out of their bodies, not the Egyptians. It's only the Israelis. It's only the Jewish people. And... Out of those 45,000 who have stormed the border, uh, 60 were killed, and half of them have already been identified by Hamas as well as its own militants. So the so other Israel half weren't. So Israel has been very careful, actually remarked. The other half weren't, but, but this is after truly trying to separate the militants from everyone under any conditions of war, of invasion, these are actually remarkably <sighs> careful proportions. This is I'm an so, invading sorry, people pardon, who have Wilf. made it very clear that what they want is the state of Israel. Nothing less than that. They don't want a state for themselves. They want us not to have our state. And I'm sorry, we're not about to do that. Okay, Dr. Anat Will, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Tel Aviv. Well, we're also joined by our reporter, Richard Downs. Uh, Richard, good evening. Um, I'm sure you, you heard that interview there. Um, there has been international condemnation of what happened yesterday. Are the Israelis paying a blind bit of notice? Well, as you heard in that interview, that's a very good example of the mentality and the psychology of most Israelis. It's a bunker mentality. It's a, a mentality that uh, the Palestinians are out to get them and that they will defend themselves at all costs, even if it is 
by what the international community has regarded as completely disproportionate use of force, shooting at unarmed uh, civilians in the large part, although there was, we have to acknowledge, uh, a serious riot going on at the, uh, at the fence. But uh, no other country uh, apart from the United States has rode in behind Israel. But guess what? The United States has rode in big time uh, in favor of Israel on this. And it's been noted by the Palestinians who've always looked to the United States, never really as an honest broker, but as the closest thing to an honest broker among the big powers that they can find. And now they say, look, the United States is hand in glove uh, with Israel. And they are in despair because they, they don't really know where to look. Where do you look? when uh, the people who you'd regarded as people who could help in the situation turn out to be hand in glove and ad idem uh, with the people who you regard as your enemies. But the Israeli mentality and the Israeli view of these things is very straightforward. They see the Palestinian uh, problem in large part from their own perspective, and they see it largely, believe it or not, as a contained and as a almost resolved problem. They've got Gaza sorted out. They have Gaza kettled, if you like, large parts of the West Bank. They also believe they have contained. And now they can set their sights on what they regard as the biggest bogey of all, which is Iran. And uh, that's all the rhetoric in Israel is about that. It's a bizarre situation from anybody else's point of view because for the rest of the world, the Israel-Palestine situation is not resolved. But in the minds of many Israelis, it's over. Uh, and Richard, as, as you mentioned, we do have to acknowledge that Hamas has been attacking Israel for many years, that many Israeli um, civilians have been killed in, in bombings and so on. Um, but looking at what happened, the other thing that happened yesterday, the opening of the um, American embassy in Jerusalem, is Benjamin Netanyahu, are the Israelis taking that as a signal that Trump has got their back all the way? He's also, of course, pulled out of the, um, the uh, nuclear deal with, with Iran. Is that emboldening the Israeli government? to basically do whatever it likes and ignore international opinion? To a certain extent, it is. I mean, the Israelis have had an extraordinary few weeks. They've had President Trump rowing in behind them almost word for word in uh, their opposition to the Iranian nuclear deal. They couldn't believe that this actually happened. And then the Americans, of course, that happened earlier, the Americans said they were going to open the embassy. And yes, they did open the embassy uh, yesterday in Jerusalem. They've had an incredible run, even, believe it or not, the Eurovision Song Contest is seen here in a political context that the world doesn't hate us, the world likes us, they voted for our song, even something as trivial as that. And they promise that the Eurovision Song Contest will be held in Jerusalem next year which causes problems for Ireland and many other countries who have difficulties in, in attending. Uh, but the, the point is they're on a roll. And Benjamin Netanyahu, despite uh, the allegations of corruption which are against him, which haven't been proved and haven't turned into charges yet, despite all the problems he has with his coalition, which is extremely right wing and fractious as well, he's on a roll. He's uh, enjoying the limelight uh, domestically with all those relative successes. And also internationally, they feel less isolated. They felt terribly isolated under the Obama administration and now all of a sudden all their friends are with them um, in uh, in Washington and they feel emboldened by this and as I say their military are not looking at the Palestinian problem they're not terribly concerned about the capability of Hamas which they regard as a unreconstructed terrorist organization determined to destroy their country they're not bothered about that they're they're looking further afield they're looking at Iran they're thinking what's coming up there and there is a sense when you talk to Israelis that there's a big international war brewing here. Um, it may be short term or it could take a very long time. Uh, but there is a sense that I Israel doesn't regard the Palestinians as a big problem and is looking to Iran and that that confrontation will happen sooner or later with the help of the Americans or without it. Okay, Richard Downs, thank you very much indeed for joining